Uh, next, we have Magdalena Maglicic. Um, she works at five, and uh, she's trying to kidnap my dog from me. And yeah, that's about it. So let's welcome Magdalena. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I know that the conference is slowly winding down, so I'll try to be as interesting as possible with my presentation. Uh, today, we'll be talking about SVG, and I'm making this highly ambitious promise of showing you how to unlock its full potential. My name is Magdalena. I'm a front-end developer here from Zagreb. I've been working as a front-end developer for a couple of years now, and my special interest is in computer graphics. I'm employed at a company from Zagreb called Five, has about 140 employees. It specializes in um, mobile solutions, and I'm there in the web team. I am also a co-organizer of the front-end Zagreb meetups. It's a local user group, and we meet every first Wednesday in the month. Um, so check us out on meetup.com and um, come to the meetup, please. Why am I talking about SVG? Out of all the technologies that I could maybe talk about uh, regarding front-end, I chose SVG because, let me just use this. Uh, I chose SVG because I worked on a couple of projects in the last few years where SVG was uh, the best solution for some of the design challenges that I had to solve. Um, in some cases, it was more obvious than others that SVG is the right choice. But on some projects, I experimented with other technologies like uh, Canvas. Um, and looking at it retrospectively, I wish I had known more about what SVG can do for me and uh, that I have reached for it as my first choice. So I'm trying to... I'm trying to save you some time and energy um, with uh, informing you what SVG can do. So a typical developer knows that SVG looks great on Retina, that it scales well, um, that it's math-based, it's vectors versus um, raster images. Uh, but that's usually where the relationship between developer and SVG ends. Uh, nobody really takes time to look into SVG and start meddling with the code and changing things. Um, so at the end of this talk, I would like you to have a different perspective on what SVG is. I would like you to see it as being powerful, more powerful than you know that it is. Uh, fun to use, not, I know, just a sec, click the wrong thing. Fun to use, uh, not strange or hard, uh, but a tool that you can do to make interesting things. And um, at the end, useful, because that's why we're here. We're trying to learn things that are useful to make us better developers. And I do think that SVG is one of those tools. Now, you don't have to sit through this whole presentation for me to tell you the secret of unlocking the full potential of SVG. Um, here it is. Uh, you have to take time to actually learn it. You have to sit down and look what elements and attributes it has and just start using it. As Dmitry Baranovsky uh, once said, if you don't know SVG, you cannot call yourself a web developer. You can call yourself a web enthusiast because it is one of the main technologies that there is out there. It was made specifically for us developers. Now, let's go through some of the questions or concerns that developers have when using SVG on the web. Um, they're usually concerned with it not behaving nicely across browsers. Now, the SVG basic features uh, are all supported across browsers, including mobile. And also some of the more advanced features like SVG uh, filters are also completely supported across browsers. Now, the problem does occur when developers, developers are trying to use SVG without the SVG ecosystem. So like trying to use the SVG filters on HTML elements. 
um, you do get buggy behavior across browsers, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't look into um, as within SVG to make some things happen. And one of those things is like filtering. Uh, we can get very cool effects with filters. So in SVG, filters are contained within the FE elements with the prefix FE standing for filter effects. And some of the more um, commonly used ones is drop shadow or Gaussian blur. But there are many more. There are many more uh, fil so-called filter primitives in SVG that we can also use not only by themselves, but also combined to make more interesting and complex filters. Uh, one of the more popular examples is this GUI menu effect uh, combined filter. Now, does anybody know how this was done in SVG? Ivan? Well, okay, post, so uh, Gauss, Gaussian blur and high contrast with the color matrix, but yeah, you can posterize it and blending it into one more um, complex filter. Now, does anybody here use Inkscape? Okay, great. Uh, it's not very popular, but uh, Inkscape, the people who work on SVG also work on Inkscape. So it's very SVG compatible, and there's a cool tool called uh, Filter Editor where you can um, play around with the filters and see all the parameters they have and without actually getting into the code, without, without have to uh, writing any code. Now. Now, uh, for people that see SVG as just for like icons and simple graphics, uh, it maybe is contraintuitive to think about it as being able to do uh, complex col color manipulation on raster images, but this is something that SVG is excellent at. We can do interesting effects like this duotone effect on an image which designers really like. So we do this with, um, with a filter called Color Matrix. Now you might think like, why wouldn't I just use CSS filters, right? Uh, this is an example of the saturate fi filter on a circle. And uh, in CSS, this is the code, the equivalent code is an SVG. It's not much of a difference. There's still the shorthand, it's very easy to use. But we, when we get into complex filters uh, like sepia effect, then in SVG we have this monstrosity, right? We have, we have to use this like function within a matrix, and it's, um, it's scary. But uh, the, the fact that we can use math and this matrix type of a filter means that we can actually go into every single pixel on every single channel on a raster image and change it with SVG, which we cannot do with CSS. So we can get really close to the metal and use math uh, in our advantage. Uh, and you don't actually have to know math to, to start using this. There are sites like the SVG Filter P Playground that lets you change the values and uh, see what happens, or you can just read an article about it. There are many online. Um, now, for developers, it's sometimes hard to wrap their head around things that come naturally to designers, like clipping and masking. Um, this is a good example of clipping which is also conveniently animated with the mouse cursor. We have just two images and a clip path that is a circle. So in SVG, we have our two images layered upon another. Also notice that the images in SVG are different than HTML image element, but they basically behave the same. And in our definitions, we have a clip path, which is a circle. Now, this circle is not drawn because it's in our definitions, and our definitions only contain some 
functions or some uh, things that we will actually use, like helper functions. And we use it on our second image, which constrains the second image to this circle. Now, if we want to make it into a mask, the thing is clipping is not masking. Uh, with masking, you can, you can do things like clipping, but for masking, there's a whole this gray area, and clipping is just either there or it's not. So we can put a fill gray on the circle, and we will get this little transparency. Um, we also can use images or gradients or patterns, um, all goes. So more often than not, we also want to animate our SVG. And working with SVG, you soon find out that there is more than one way to do it. Actually, there are three technologies. There are three technologies that can be used to animate SVG. And let's just quickly go through them. So Smile. Um, the only thing you need to know about Smile is don't use it. Yeah. It, for all practical purposes, it's not, it's not useful. It's not that it's not a great technology to animate SVG. It is. It really is. But it has been deprecated by Chrome and then undeprecated, and then they plan to deprecate it. It was never supported on IE. And because of its declarative nature, it looks like SVG, which is declarative, uh, it's hard to keep track of all the complex animations that are going on. So. Let's just uh, take that off the table for animating SVG. CSS animations have this, um, CSS and SVG have this really interesting relationship where a lot of attributes in SVG can be accessed through CSS. In this example, the stroke offset on a path attribute. And in that matter, it can be uh, also manipulated and animated. Now, I don't. Uh, usually really use um, CSS to animate my SVG because across browsers you can get buggy behavior, especially for some advanced features. So, but this stroke dash offset can uh, result in something like this. This is a kind of hacky way to use uh, stroke dash offset to make this drawing animation. There are many libraries out there that you can do this with. So if Smile is off the table and we don't really want to use CSS, then we're left with JavaScript. And luckily, there are many JavaScript, JavaScript libraries out there. Um, one is GreenSock, which is great for complex animations. And it also has a paid plugin called Morph SVG. Um, if you're going to do morphing, I highly suggest you look into it. Snap SVG is like jQuery for uh, SVG, and it makes it easier to work with it. And D3 is for the more serious developer that needs SVG to uh, data visualize and um, maybe for infographics. My favorite library is called BodyMovin. We heard about it yesterday. Um, and I had great results with it. It's uh, an After Effects plugin. We also saw this website. This is one of my favorite websites. And it just it looks great. It feels great. And uh, a lot of these animations, except for the um, text transforms, has, have been weighed, uh, made with body movement. Lottie is also a library that uh, is based on body movement, but it's for React Native, uh, iOS, and Android applications. Right. And um, if you develop for those platforms, then I suggest you um, give it a shot. Morphing is one specific type of animation that you can do in SVG, uh, which I don't see enough of on the web. And I really wish I saw it more often, because uh, I see a great potential, especially with the popular frameworks like React and Vue.js, um, to animate the, the states, so the transitions between states, without losing this continuity of the definition of the of your like UI element. Now we've seen that SVG has some of its problems. We've seen that CSS filters are kinda taking on uh, 
the functions from SVG. So what does the future hold for SVG? There is a specification for SVG2 that has been a work in progress for many years now. And it promises things like multiple fills, um, smart line joints, and mesh gradients. And, but the problem is that is the, it is unknown if this will ever actually become a reality for us because of slow browser adoption and because of unwillingness of the vector editing software like Inkscape and, um, and uh, Illustrator and Sketch and Infinity Designer to actually adapt to this new specification. We as developers can have a say in this. We can put pressure on um, the browser vendors and the software companies and say, look, we really want this in the browser. We really need this and we would like to make cool stuff with it. Now let's summarize this whole presentation. We're almost done. Um, to unlock the full potential of SVG, you have to learn the basics. Go on MDN, familiarize yourself with the concepts of SVG, and start learning, just start learning the code. If you're going to use uh, SVG advanced features, think about using them only on SVG elements and not because you'll get best results. You will not have to go through all the browsers and um, look if there are bugs or not. Uh, try the JS libraries. Look what is out there. Even if you don't want to use a JS library to animate your SVG, um, just see what is available, and maybe you will be in a situation where that would be a better option than um, going to Canvas or WebGL for your problem. And last but not least, do not be afraid uh, to experiment and to have fun with SVG because you will um, just miss out on an opportunity to learn one of the basic tools that we have as web developers. So thank you so much for listening. Questions? Uh I have one. Uh, how do I convince my designer to use Inkscape and SVG? Because if they use that, I don't have to write any code, right? I can just export? No. No, I do have to write code. OK. Too bad. <laughs> no, I mean, Inkscape is cool for the, like, the SVG nerd like I am, because it is so compatible with the specification. But, um, I mean, it's totally fine that uh, designers use Sketch or Illustrator or whatever, Affinity Designer, uh, for the SVGs, and then they export it. One thing that people don't do, and they really should, is optimize their SVG. So there are plugins for Illustrator and Sketch with which when you save SVG, it get ri it's get gets rid of all the extra junk code that you don't need if you're going to use SVG on the web. Uh, also, if you as a developer get a file, like an exported SVG file from your designer, run it through some of the, some of the optimizers there are on the web for SVG so you can get less code and your animations and your filters will run more fast. Other questions? I can ask them all day long. Uh, have you run into any limitations with SVG? Any what? Limitations. Yeah, there are many limitations with SVG. <laughs> there are plenty of limitations, especially that um, the fact that you cannot use a lot of things on HTML elements is something that makes developers re really shy away from using SVG. Like CSS filters, you can use on HTML elements. That is something where, well, browsers are just not, you know, they're not supporting it. So those are some of the things. Also, I run into browser bugs that are just unexplainable. Like my SVG in uh, Chrome, when I try to transform it, it just does all these repaints and new layers which did not, does not happen in Firefox, and sometimes you just don't know why that is happening. But you have to test things, of course. Um, what are some of the um, elements of a website where you would recommend to use <coughs> SVG 
instead of something else, like what are the most common uses of SVG on the website? Most common use is for icons. And almost everybody used it for an icon. Um, a lot of people use uh, icon fonts, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, it makes sense in some cases, but I prefer for icons to use SVG. And if you're uh, like scared of a lot of uh, HTTP requests, because if you have a lot of icons on your site, um, there are also SVG sprites. There are uh, font systems based on SVG that you can start using today. That is the most common use. Uh, the second common use is just as an image format inside uh, image HTML element or background image. That is, but uh, what I'm proposing is to go beyond that, to look at SVG from within, to open it in a text editor, and um, start really changing the code, not just using it as a done deal, as an image format that looks great on Retina. Another question over here. Hi, nice talk. Thanks. Uh, I have a question regarding uh, if we have a lot of uh, like filters and uh, all sort of uh, SVG filters, as you showed, uh, how will that affect on uh, browsers like optimization? And uh, will it take a lot of processing power for a browser to, to like render all this stuff? No, that's, that's the thing. Uh, it works. Instantly, it's really it's really powerful, especially because like CSS filters are based on SVG filters, so it's a level of abstraction. But SVG filters is where it all came from. That is the basis for uh, filter definition. And as you as you saw, it uses math. It just and in SVG within itself has some optimization things already built in, like it uses. Um, an sRGB color interpolation, I don't know, you know, way of um, doing the math on every single pixel. So it's really fast. It's optimized already. Another question in the back here. Hey, uh, so what kind of a tool would you recommend for prototyping? Like to animation? what? For prototyping, so animation, so prototyping those animations in the design phase, so not in the developing phase. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, I never. I always when I uh, I'm a developer, so when I always uh, I always get animations from my designer as um, completed thing. I don't really. I rarely use prototypes, um, so I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> How to, how to, what is a tool that can make easy prototypes and that SVG is linked to? I don't know. Right. I don't know. Somebody's, I'm certain, smarter than I am in that regard. Okay, uh, that's all the time we have for questions. Thanks again, Magdalena.